In this video we're going to remote control our awning switch as you see here. Now this can be done as a standalone project or as we're doing with here we're going to integrate that remote control with the remote control for our dimmers. But you can do it either way. And so we do have our motor switch and the motor switch has the crossover which is the X there. And I do have a motor and I've just put a piece of tape around it so you can see the rotation. And I've actually added a set of jump over wires onto these because these are a slightly different size connector than these. And they won't fit. And I'm going to use these later so I don't want to cut them off. We're just going to put the motor on here. And it really doesn't matter which lead goes on which because if this is supposed to be retract and it's extend, you can turn it around or you can swap the leads. But here we have one marked power. Or in one mark ground. Turn the power on and I'll hold the motor. And as you can see, one direction, the other direction. And you might think that we could just take this relay and parallel the contacts from the relays into the switch contacts, and then we could use either this or this, but it's not quite that simple. There's two issues here. The first issue is if somebody were to push this to the up position while at the same time somebody with the wireless transmitter for the relay push this down, we're going to have a direct short across the battery and vice versa. If this is pushed down and it's pushed up, the same thing. Now you may think, well, you know, what's the chances of that happening? Well, probably pretty rare, however, good engineering practices dictate that if it's possible, it's going to happen. So we want to make sure that we can never short this thing by simultaneously pushing both controls. And there are several ways to do that, but the way that I've come up with is I made a little relay module, and again on my webpage, uh, you can go there and you can see the schematic for the module. It also is built on a circuit board, so you can order the circuit board from OSH Park where I get all my other circuit boards and you can build this relay. There's actually four relays in here and this is rated to about eight and a half amps so it's sufficient for an awning motor. You can see the schematic for these relays and you'll see how I'm preventing both controls from being pushed in the opposite direction simultaneously from shorting out the battery. And these actually are small relays but they'll handle up to 30 amps in the short term period up to 20 seconds and they're designed for the automotive industry for things like power windows, power sunroof, power locks, those kind of things. So these relays actually will handle it even though they're very small. And the second issue is this takes about 6 milliamp years of residual current. And in a boondocking situation, we don't want to have any residual current. And yeah, 6 milliamp years is not a lot, but it all adds up. So we're going to power this separately so we can shut this off. So in other words, if you're in a boondocking situation, we can retain just the mechanical switch and draw no power when we're not using the awning. But if you get into a situation where you have shore power, then you can turn this on and then you'll have wireless control along with the manual control. Since the awning control is an add-on to my dimmer control, I need a four-channel transmitter and receiver. However, if you're doing the awning control as a standalone project, you only require a two-channel transmitter and receiver. So your needs are going to dictate what type of transmitter and receiver you have. And from this graphic, you can see that the four-channel receiver and transmitter I want to use is available in two versions. We have a four-channel transmitter on the left with a four-channel receiver. On the right, we have a four-channel transmitter and four one-channel receivers. And in theory at least, either one will work for my application, but there are advantages and disadvantages to each one. This is a 433 MHz wireless relay, and this particular one is a four-channel. The advantage is, if you take a four-channel transmitter like this, you just program it, and all four channels are programmed at once. However, the problem is, if you had a 16-channel wireless remote, and you wanted to program the four channels, say one, two, three, four, and you wanted to use the rest for something else, this will not work. What will happen is all these buttons will be replicated by this receiver. So, for instance, channel one might be on button one, five, 13, and 15. Channel two might be two, eight, 10, 12, and so on. 
So you're really wasting your multi-channel remote. So if you're going to use this in a relay system that has more than four relays, you probably don't want to use this four-channel relay. What you want to do is to use the single-channel relays. Since I only have two channels required for this switch and for the awning, these relays all independently program to an individual button. So I could program one of these to button 1, I could program the other one to button 16 if I wanted to. And then button 2 through 15 would be reserved for other applications. And the same thing with this, do this 1 and 4, I could do 2 and 3, and so on. The advantage is these can be used for any button that you want, and you program each one separately. The disadvantage is that we'd have to have four of these versus one of these if we had four channels we wanted to operate. And these have the same amount of current requirement in standby as this one. So in other words, this is, a, like I said, it was five milliampers. Each one of these are five. So this would require five milliampers in standby. If you had four of these, it would require 20 milliampers. And we finally have the full mock-up done. And admittedly, it doesn't look very pretty. But we're not here for looks, we're here to make sure it works. So we have the motor and we have our relay module, our receiver, this is a four channel receiver, and of course our awning switch. Push the switch down, the motor turns one way. Push the switch up, turns the opposite direction. Same here. I have channel one, channel two. And so just to demonstrate the safety override, if I push number one or up, the motor goes in a clockwise direction. Now if I push them at the same time, nothing happens. If I push the opposite switch, it stops. So regardless of which button I press first, the motor will always stop. So that way we'll never ever short across the power supply if we push one button one way and the other button the other way. And to add a wireless awning function, I had to pull the control board out of the control panel. So we have to pop these off and relocate them because I'm going to use four of these. And they're just stuck on with tape, so I'll pull the tape off and put the new ones on. And here we have the completed modification to the board. We have the four receivers here. These two receivers originally and continue to be for the two dimmers. And these two receivers are for the up and down control of the awning. Again, here is the relay control module to the awning. And now it's pretty much ready to put in. And like before, we can see in here, see our control panel. We've wired our dimmer back in here, but we've also wired in our awning switch here. And so let's just see how good of a job we did. I've got the remote here, and channel 4 is awning retract. So here we go. Then of course channel 3, on in extend. And then we get under here and channel 2 is the LED on bright, dim, LED off. At this point we have a completely working system and we don't need to proceed any further. However, I'm going to take it to the next level with what I'm going to show you next. And this is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want. I had actually already designed and built a receiver for the awning project. And this is the receiver here. And the center four terminals were to go to the awning. And then the two terminals here and here were to go to the two dimmers. And I kind of made this thing to be a universal type receiver where you could remove this board and put another board in if you needed some of the different function. And it also did eight channels and it had a nice display and everything. And actually it ended up being a little more complicated than it needed to be. And again here at RVProject.com we're building things that you can build and I just felt that this was just maybe a little bit over the top. So I've completely redesigned the receiver and integrated the relay board into one board that is going to be simpler to build. So in a sense, this awning project is just temporary, and when I get the new circuit board in, at that point I'm going to do an upgrade by installing it.
for now I'm just going to show you what I actually had originally started with when I experimented with the wireless relays I discovered that they just simply transmit usually an 8 digit code so if I depress button 1 you can see that it's 5592512 so that is the code that button 1 transmits button 2 another code button 3 a third code and button 4 a fourth code so this display will give you the codes of these buttons and then you have to go in and program the receiver to do a certain action depending on those codes so it's kind of a two-step process take a transmitter and hold it to this receiver find a code by depressing the button and then go into the software and add that code to whatever function you wanted to add to it and since this is going to be inside of a cabinet it finally dawned on me it's kind of dumb to have a display when you can't see it and so the new receiver the microcontroller that I'm using has a built-in USB connector and you can plug that USB connector right into a laptop and you can use that laptop to read that same code but it doesn't show up on a display it shows up on the laptop well that's going to be much more convenient because then all I have to do is to put a USB port on the outside of my control panel if I ever need to add codes to the receiver and I can simply plug in and add those codes and I'm going to keep this and use this for a piece of test equipment because it does read the codes sufficiently of these transmitters now, wouldn't you know it, one thing I've also found out, these four transmitters are purchased in two different relay kits. But guess what? They all have the same four codes. So button one on all four transmitters transmit the same code as verified by my receiver. So that may be a limitation when you're considering using multiple receivers and multiple transmitters. I run across another item that was really fairly promising to begin with. This is a Sonoff RF bridge at 433 megahertz. So this is a bridge between Wi-Fi and the wireless transmitters. And this allows us to use our smartphone for the various push buttons. So this is exactly the same as 1, 2, 3, and 4. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can show you that it works on dim off so in reality I see two problems with this number one is you've seen in the demo it takes one to two seconds from the depressing of the button for the action to complete now that's not really critical for things like overhead lighting but if you have something like our awning connected you don't want to depress the retract or extend button any more than necessary because you know that could bind the gears or that could you know add more stress to the sidewall and in worst case I suppose it could rip the sidewall screws out so that really is not a viable solution and also you have to log into a server you know you don't always have internet available at the campsite and even then if you have it it might take longer than two seconds and there really is no reason to log into the internet because this bridge establishes a direct link to your smartphone and the only reason that they would need to use it is this will also respond to Alexa and okay I can see why you may want to log in the internet for that but for an RV environment you know this is really not a viable solution now they did tell me the manufacturer that they were going to come up with a LAN solution that you didn't have to log in the internet with but that was seven or eight months ago and they have put out three or four different revisions of the software since then and I've not seen them go that route yet so this is close I mean it really was a cool idea but it just is not going to work for an RV. However, stay tuned because I'm going to do my darndest to make one of these that will actually work.